Sometimes we think ourselves that we are knowledgeable. We are knowledgeable. Who else knows better than me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The knowledge you have been given is very, very limited. Why are you trying to get the knowledge? Why are you going to school or college or why are you going to the university to get the knowledge? Of course, but for Muslim, it is beyond that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the day of judgment, the first people who will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who claim in the dunya that I will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us duties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he told us to be mindful of the duties he has given to us. So when we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to keep in the mind that we are only doing that solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the important things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us after he gave us this life, after he created us, to be knowledgeable, to be knowledgeable, to get the knowledge, to acquire the knowledge, to get engaged with the knowledge, to be among the knowledgeable people, for us to increase our knowledge, for us to increase our, uh, increase our knowledge. The ulama rahimahumullah, the salaf rahimahumullah, they have said, and you can feel that in your own life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much of his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you if you want to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, you won't be able to count them. This is how much favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ If you are to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own life, think about your own life, don't think about others. You won't be able to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Indeed, mankind, insan, ظَلُوم is unjust to himself and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kaffar, and also denier, constantly denies the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a human nature. However, the ulama, rahimahumullah, they said that the greatest favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which you are experiencing in your life, is acquiring the knowledge. Achieving the knowledge, knowledge, being knowledgeable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 113. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ This verse has been revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah is telling him about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on so we can relate this verse within our life. You can relate it to your own life. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to you the book, kitab, وَالْحِكْمَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you wisdom. وَعَلَّمَكَ And he has taught you, remember, he has taught you مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ Which you have not knew, which you don't know. وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا And great indeed is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor upon you. If you think that you have been given even a small amount of knowledge, you are favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that knowledge is very limited, very limited. Sometime we think ourselves that we are knowledgeable. We are knowledgeable. Who else knows better than me? This comes to our mind sometime. Yes, we are human, human being. This is a human nature. Sometime will come, it will automatically come to you and me that I am probably the most knowledgeable in this area or in this field. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The knowledge you have been given is very, very limited. With the new academic year to begin or has begun, children are going back to school. Alhamdulillah. Let's say Alhamdulillah. Many people across the globe, they don't have schools to go and attend. Many children, they wonder, they hope that if they get small space for them to sit down and what? Get the knowledge. Alhamdulillah, our children are going back to school. 
Our youngsters, they're going back to either secondary or college. Adults are going to the university or whatever field they are, their academic year is beginning. The greatest ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this sense that he has gave you or he has given you the ability to start a new academic year in your life. Relate it with everyone, with your children, with the youngsters, with yourself, with everyone in this society who are going to start a new academic year. Why are you trying to get the knowledge? Why are you going to school or college or why are you going to the university to get the knowledge? Of course, but for Muslim, it is beyond that. It is beyond that. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that your intention for you to get the knowledge should be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? He told us in one of the hadith, if you are getting the knowledge only to gain the worldly benefit without concern, without having concern about akhirah, since we are believer, alhamdulillah, let's say alhamdulillah that we are believer. The greatest ni'mah for you and me is that we have the ni'mah of the faith, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, if you work with the society, if you work within the greater society in the UK, you will find many people, they are clueless what religion they should follow. Many people, many people, they don't know whether they belong to a religion or not, whether that Christianity or whatever, Muslim or Buddhism, even unfortunately, many of our own people from our own community and society, they are confused what religion they should follow. Wallahi, this is the reality. The brothers who are in education sector, they will know more. The brothers and sisters who are working in the education sector, higher education sector, they know how much the Muslim students are struggling in terms of what? Gaining their faith. They don't even know, they are confused. Why should I follow Islam? Why should I pray? Why should I fast? Why should I go to Mecca for Hajj? Why should I go for, to Mecca for Umrah? Why? Is there, is there a reason for me to follow Allah? These are the type of questions are coming. For us to overcome these, we have to cons be concerned. Not only to gain the knowledge, only to get the world. Worldly benefit. No, this is why Rasulullah told us that you have to be concerned about Allah and of course the knowledge. So let's come back to the hadith. The Rasulullah sallallahu told us that if someone is only concerned about getting the dunya and not concerned about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by acquiring the knowledge in the day of judgment, that person, he or she will not smell the fragrance of Jannah. Now imagine if you are a believer, if you don't have that intention and your intention only is what? To get the world. And you're not, your intention is not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet you know that this life is given by Allah. Yet you know that this ni'mah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the situation will be. May Allah protect us and may Allah grant us ability to purify our intention. So why? You have to let your children know that you are not getting the knowledge only to pass their what your school and go to the college and this and that Allah has gave you duty Allah has given you duty fulfill that duties if you are to start the academic year whether you are doing post grad or whatever focus on the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have that intention in your mind that with acquiring these knowledge I want to change the society I want to give something to the society according to the teaching of Allah and according to the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is another thing to be concerned. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the day of judgment, the first people who will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who claim in the dunya that I was or I am knowledgeable. If you think or if you claim that I am knowledgeable in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you before everyone else. This is the what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. In the hadith, he told us, in the day of judgment, Allah will call someone. Come here. Allah will tell the angels, bring that man or woman here. Who is that person? He has acquired knowledge. He has what? Taught the knowledge to others and got the knowledge from the others. And Allah will ask him, why did you learn? And why did you teach people? So that person will proudly say, Ya Allah, for your sake, Allah said, Allah will say, Kadabt. Allah will say, you are a liar. You didn't do that. You didn't do that for the sake of me. 
You've done it for the people to tell you that you are knowledgeable. You are an alim. You are a very great knowledgeable person. And you got that in the dunya. So you don't have anything in the akhirah. So if this is the case, we have to purify our intention. We have to purify our intention. Another thing which is very important. Sometimes we are deep too into the knowledge that we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to be concerned about religion, to be concerned about the duties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. When your children are going to school, although it is very difficult for them to perform their salah in the school, remind them. There is no harm in you reminding your children that try to pray in the, in the school or in the college. Wallah, in the school and college, they provide the prayer space, prayer place. But because we are heedless, our children, of course, they won't know we until unless we teach them. Get them the teaching that do not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you are going to college, university, every place in this world and in this country particularly, they've got place of prayer, space of worship. Do not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are engaging yourself with the education. And also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us to get the manners before you get the education. Before you learn the knowledge, learn the manners. Teach your children the manners. Sometime we get that they will learn the manners in the school. Why? We have to teach them the manners. How to give salam, how to respect others how to respect elders, how to be what kind with the youngers. Our children are heedless, clueless of these kind of things. We have to teach them. And this is our duty. And also, we have to get into the knowledge and try to get the right people to get the knowledge from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Surah Al-Kahf. And one of, the, one of the sunnah of Friday is to recite Surah Al-Kahf. Inshallah, we will try our best to recite Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. In that Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us a story of Musa and Al-Khidr. I'm sure we are, when we hear the word Musa alayhi salam, we get excited because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us and told us in the Quran. Interesting story of Musa. So Musa, when he started following Al-Khidr, he said a beautiful word to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِ مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْدًا Musa said to Al-Khidr alayhi salam, may I follow you in a condition that you teach me, you teach me the guidance you were taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is asking another one that, seeking permission from another knowledgeable man, knowledgeable person that, if you give me the permission, if you allow me to be with you on a condition that you will teach me. So in the dunya, give and take, if you want to get the knowledge, be with the knowledgeable people. If you want to benefit from the knowledge of the others, be with the right people. And especially with our children, with our youngsters. We have to choose the right teachers, the right place, the right school, the right madrasa for them to be educated, for them to get the right education of the dunya and of the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in another verse in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who are knowledgeable, truly knowledgeable, they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone else. If you have the knowledge of the Qur'an, knowledge of the hadith, the worldly knowledge even sometimes will help you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays books are everywhere. Hardly we read books. We're so busy with our phone. We are so busy with the social media. Imagine the book of Bukhari, a massive book. Imam Bukhari has written that book in a few years. And for us to read that, it takes a while, it takes a few number of years. Not only that, if you want to read about a research, we are so heedless about reading. We don't have the habit of reading nowadays. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the Lord, of your Lord who has created. But we don't read. We are busy of gossiping. What others done, what he has done, what she has done, what I have done, what my son will do, what my society is doing. But Allah told you to read. We are not reading. So when we have the habit of reading in our life, our knowledge will increase. We will be busy with ourselves. Now, nowadays we are busy with others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to be busy with ourselves. You have to, you will be given your book in the day of judgment to read it by your own. No one will else, no one else will read it. You have to read it. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ability to understand. Many brothers and sisters request their dua as usual. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease in their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youngsters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us who are going to start a new academic year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the knowledge which is beneficial in the dunya and which is beneficial in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that knowledge through which we will be able to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to be mindful of whatever duties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Make sure you make dua for yourself, make dua for your children, make dua for your parents, make dua for the entire ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save God. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too so please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.